Alrighty. This time around I thought maybe since I've got so many air rifles in my collection that it might be interesting to show them to y'all. Particularly the, the 10 760s I've got in my collection, Power Masters, Pump Masters, and one 66 AB Power Master. It was the same old Power Master slash Pump Master plastic receiver and all. Squirrel off or jumped around digging. A lot of pin oaks around here. Anyway, uh, the 66 AB Power Master was a regular pump master since it's got the plastic receiver. The longer butt stock with a raised cheek, cheek piece on the comb, black and white caps and all that. And the sleeve on the barrel makes it look like a 22. It puts, it's made to be a little bit bigger with a longer uh, reach for young adults who it was intentionally made to appeal to. Besides, some of the newer rifles, like the Optimus 22 I gave my youngest son for his birthday, and uh, the 177 Cal Optimus I gave my older brother. I'm still waiting for him to come and get it, because that dang woman he was seeing wrecked his Cadillac. So anywho, we'll, I'll go through my collection and give the build dates, what I did to them and stuff like that and let you all see them. So get a good idea of what's valuable, what ain't, and uh, what you can do with them and things like that. That's chiefly what my videos are about. Is showing you how how to restore, rebuild, repair, restore mod, whatever. New and new and vintage air rifles. I even work on black powder guns. Those are fun. I got a smoke pole. Well, actually, I got two smoke poles. But I would really like to have, uh, say, Sharps and Remington rolling blocks. in the uh, Spencer Carbine in 5090. That thing was, geez, made a, it was a bit bigger than a 405 Winchester like Teddy Roosevelt shot in his. Stuff like that. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, first off we got the 760 Power Master Variant 1 here. I bought with my newspaper money when I was 14. Found it in the closet of lost gold. And modified it with MOE Picatinny rails, 761 new old stock XL barrel. And it's kind of a peekaboo finish on the butt stock. It looks a little darker at this angle. And the 160 Pell Master here is the gun at least as old as I am. I completely restored it, stem to stern inside and out with the uh, XP tuned valve from Archer air guns should take it to around 730 feet per second this, and here the 761 XL power master it's a top shelf special model you can see from the seller's picture here some of the detail don't know why the buttstock was disconnected though and here's after being cleaned up and oiled and buffed up brass and everything nice and shiny pretty rifle just needs a seal kit and my baby here the crossman model number 70 pell gun uh, copied pretty exactly I might add from the Winchester model 70 base model known as a Ranger had a walnut uh, stained beechwood stock with no checkering I'm gonna change that though Beautiful rifle. Shoots good too. 
and here the Crossman 66 AB Power Master, young adults version of the uh, 760 Power Master. This one shoots really good too, it's all original except for a handful of new old stock parts I had to replace on it, used to replace the parts were missing. And the Crossman 25th Anniversary Commemorative here, 1991. In very good condition for 30 bucks on the auctions. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? A little bit of reddish stain in, in, the, in, the, in the walnut, medium walnut that you use on the stock with a scope here all cleaned up. And the 760 Power Master Variant 4 from January 77 with a period correct Weaver V22A scope on it, also known as a Dual X. They originated the Plex reticle with that scope. And all cleaned up. I think but it finally got to where it needs a seal kit, darn it. Nice rifle. And the 760 C Pump Master uh, from January 89 here with a with a vintage uh, center point 4x32 scope on it. Cleaned up and I think it's pretty nice. And here's the 760B Pump Master built October 01. Why the B's are built later than the C's and D's I have no idea. As you can see it on the box there, I'm not kidding, it's new old stock. That's, I got two of these uh, new old stock rifles. This one cost me 100 bucks though. This one here cost me 30. Uh, 760 BRD Pump Master from November 02. And right there where it's circled I had to sand it down convex so it would sit down lower so the clamps would work properly on the, the rounded top of that dovetail. Thing Chinese had it the mount flat on the bottom and it just wouldn't work. And I all oiled up and wiped up, wiped down dry and everything here. Nice and clean. Again, new old stock. And the 760 C Pump Master from January 89 here. That one needs a seal kit. And some of the other ones in the background. Other 760s. And 760D Power Master from April 98 here. I, the first one to get my overwash process I designed for the molded in grain and the plastic stocks. Look at the detail on that. It's the same stock stocks used on the 760Bs, both of them. Now that's interesting. It looked, I made it look like walnut with the overwash process I came up with that Crossman stopped doing in the 80s sometime. And here is the 73 Saddle Pal CO2 lever action crossman in very good condition on the outside, but it's all stuck on the inside. The valve's stuck. Have to take it apart and clean and polish and lube and everything. And right there you can see this 73 Saddle Pal logo on the left side of the receiver. And you, you, you pull the lever down and push that, that plate up to load pellets. And again it's, oh you know, here, here you go. The Daisy 1894 Buffalo Bill Commemorative. It only shoots BBs, but it's from November 76, the American Centennial year. And uh, this one has, uh, right, right there you can see the Buffalo Bill's actual signature. Uh, photo, photo, they photoshop it onto a decal or something and stick it on there. And... I also have reproduction of the hang tag that w would have been attached to it when it was for sale, reproduced by a guy on eBay. And here is Buffalo Bill Cody's grandson, again William Cody. I went to school with him at Northwood Junior High between 69 and 71. Not seen him since. I don't know what happened to him. And here is the, the model 1894. Daisy version of the Sears and Roebuck 66 Centennial from uh, May 76, I think it was. I, I since it's yellow and everything, I, I named it Pehaska after the Sioux word for custer, meaning yellow hair. 
beautiful rifle. That's, that's fun to shoot. Octagon barrel and everything, and here's a close-up of the receiver and the tang and all that stuff, just like the 1894 Winchester. And here they are together for comparison. And here is the Winchester 1400 CS 177 Cal Ultra Magnum. The long time of the air gun world at like 52 inches. That is a big ass rifle. Sit was sitting on top of the my walker there from the Pimp My Walker series. With uh, there's the Winchester logo there. And the Benjamin Trail NPXL 25 Magnum with the scope it comes with and I bought the the sling since they stopped giving you the sling with it in 2013 and here is its sister rifle the Remington 725 VTR same 25 Magnum action as uh, that came rather from the NPXL 725 trail and here it is after being uh, camo dipped by uh, Mid Ohio Hydrographics in uh, Realtree Edge, and I added the hardware for the sling, and I also had a master logo there too, so it would look right. And a Crossman Guidehawk NP here, a 177 Ultra Magnum at 1,250 feet per second, 2016 uh, limited run, Remington-like stock. That's a pretty rifle. Shoots good and. and just a, a, a really nice wooden steel rifle. And here's the Hot Sound Striker 1000X22 Springer before I changed it. Because I've got the, the Model 95 stock there on the bottom. I'm going to, I, I was, I've been converting to fit it. And here it is. Here's the Hot Sound 95 stock with the Striker 22 action in it. And the Hot Side Edge Vortex 25 Magnum, as it looked when I, as it, as I bought it, and you all know what this one looks like. It's all familiar. And uh, I I dropped it in the now vacant Striker 1000X stock. Dropped right in and added the Hot Sun sling to that one as well. And here is a Crossman 700 Pellmaster 22 CO2 rifle from April 69. That is their Crossman's modern take on the old rolling block. That flat looking knob thing right here is the rolling block. The, the hole for the pellet on top and the Pellmaster logo and all that stuff there plainly stamped. And look at the other side here. You can see that that's, that again is an Elm stock. What do you think of that? Pretty cool. I'm sure that's not it, but it's going to be up for now. i got to catch up on other things. <laughs> so I can build up some spending money again and the tax money comes in. And it's cage bar the door. I might get a wood floor in here and some French doors with those brass handles to so the man cave looks a little better besides getting rid of some clutter. Man caves are always reaching critical mass for some reason. But, that's it for this week. So, good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. We'll see you again. <laughs>